Chapter 5, The Other Sister Grabbing one of the elephant tusks as a handrail, Aru stepped into the statue's mouth. Inside, it was cold and dry, and far larger than seemed possible. A hole appeared, carved out of stone and marble, and the ceiling soared overhead. Aru stared around her, stunned, as she remembered every time she had leaned against the elephant, never knowing it had been hiding a magical corridor within it. Boo flew down the passageway, urging her forward. Come along, come along. Aru ran to keep up. The hallway sealed itself behind her. Ahead was a closed door. Light slipped out from a gap on one side. Boo perched on her shoulder and pecked her ear. What was that for? exclaimed Aru. That was for renaming me, said the pigeon to smuggling. Now tell the door of Minnie that you need to go to your sibling who has awakened. Sibling. Aru suddenly felt sick. Her mom traveled most weekends. Was she working or was she visiting her other children? Children she'd prefer spending time with. How can I have a sibling? Blood isn't the only thing that makes you related to someone, said Boo. You have a sibling because you share divinity. You're a child of the gods because one of them helped forge your soul. That doesn't make a difference to your genetics. Genetics might say that you're never going to be taller than five feet. Your soul doesn't care about that. Souls don't have height, you know. Aru hadn't heard anything after. You're a child of the gods. Up until this point, her brain had only distantly understood that she could be a, could be a Pandava. If she was a Pandava, that meant that a god had helped make her and, exclaimed, and claimed her as his own, as his kid. Her hand flew to her heart. Aru had the strangest impulse to reach into herself as she might pluck out her own soul. She wanted to look at the back of it, as if it had a tag, like on a t-shirt. What, what would it say? Made in the heavens? Kinda? If she couldn't hold it, it didn't seem real. And then another thought took root, one that was even stranger than the fact that a god was her dad. So I'm like a goddess? She asked. That wouldn't be so bad. No, said Boo, but the Pandavas were like demigods. They could use divine weapons and stuff. So that makes me half a goddess, right? asked Aru. She examined her, hand, examined her hands, flexing them like Spider-Man did whenever he started shooting out webs. Does that mean I get to do magical things too? Do I get powers or a cape? There shall be no capes. A hat? No. Theme song? Please stop. Aru looked down at her clothes. If she was going to be meeting some long lost sibling, she really wished she was wearing something other than Spider-Man pajamas. What happens after, after I meet them? Boo did that pigeon thing where he regarded her at an angle. Well, we must go to the other world, of course. Not quite what it used to be. It dwindles with humanity's imagination. So I suspect that it is, but that it's currently the size of a closet, or perhaps a shoebox. Then how will I fit? It will make room," said Boo airily. "You should have seen it in its glory days. There was a night bazaar where you could purchase dreams on a string. If you had a good singing voice, you could use it to buy rice pudding dusted with moonlight. Finest thing I've ever eaten. Well." Second only to a spicy demon. Mmm. He ignored Aru's cringe. We'll take you to the court of the sky. There, you may formally ask the Council of Guardians for the details of your quest. Boo's feathers ruffled when he mentioned the council. You'll get your weapons. I shall get my place of honor back. Make no mistake. And then it's up to you and your brother or sister. Gods help us. Weapons? repeated Aru. What kind of weapons? That's not something they teach you in seventh grade. How am I supposed to help the sleeper from getting to the Lord of Destruction if I can't throw a bow and arrow? You shoot a bow and arrow. Right, I knew that. Aru wasn't exactly the best at gym. Just last week, she'd scratched at the inside of her nose hard enough to fake a nosebleed and get out a dodgeball. Perhaps you have a hidden talent somewhere inside you, said Boo. He squinted at her, buried quite deeply, I imagine. But if there are all these, 
But if they're all these deities, why don't they help? Why leave it up to, as you said, a bundle of hormones and incompetence? Gods and goddesses may occasionally help, but they don't mess around with affairs that affect only humans. To them, mortal lives are but a speck of dust on the eyelash. You don't think the gods would even a little be a little be even a little upset to find that their entire universe was stamped out? Boo shrugged. Even time has to end. The real measure of when others will get involved comes down to whether or not you succeed. The gods will accept the outcome either way. Aru gulped. Awesome. That's just the best. Boo nipped her ear. Ow! said Aru. Could you not? You are the child of the gods. Stand up straight. Aru rubbed her ear. A deity was her father. She still couldn't be quite believe it. She had lied about many things, but she never invented stories about a father. She wouldn't felt ridiculous. She would have felt ridiculous bragging about someone who had no interest in her. Why should she go out of her way to make him sound better than he actually was? He had never been there. The end. Her mother didn't speak of him either. There was only one photo of a man in the house. He was handsome and dark haired with skin the color of dark amber. And he had the strangest pair of eyes. One was blue and one was brown. But Aru wasn't even sure he was her father. He didn't look like the deity at all. At least not like anyone in the Hall of the Gods. Then again, ancient statues weren't always a good reference. Everyone looked the same when they were cut out of granite and sandstone, and their features were worn down to faded smiles and half-lidded eyes. Apparently, she herself was divine-ish, but whenever she looked in the mirror, all she noticed was that her eyebrows kept trying to join up, and it stood to reason that if you were even a little bit divine, you should not have a unibrow. Now, said Boo. Tell the door of Minnie where you want to go. Aru stared at the door. There were several symbols and scenes etched into its frame. Imag images of warriors notching their bows and letting their arrows fly. When Aru blinked, she even saw a wooden arrow zoom across the tableau. She reached out and placed her palm against the door. The engraved wood pressed back like a cat nuzzling her hand as if she were trying to get to know her too. Take me to the other Pandava, she said the words breathlessly. She was right, words did have power. When she said the word Pandava, all the feelings that came from discovering who she really was uncoiled like a spring jumping to life. It was not unpleasant. It was like riding a roller coaster and relaxing enough to let the initial panic turn into something else, exhilaration joy, anticipation. She was Aru Shaw. Suddenly, the words she thought she knew had opened up, as if stage curtains had been yanked back to show her that there was so much more than what she had imagined. There was magic, secrets crouched in the dark, characters from stories, like the one she'd been told all her life, were taking off their mask and saying, I was never a tale, but a truth. And the thought wiped off her grin. There was also her mom, now frozen with a worried expression on her face. Aru's heart felt like a painful knot inside her. I'm not letting you stay like that, mom. I promise. The door opened. Light washed, washed over her. Boo squawked. Aru felt yanked forward. Gone was the mild weather of Georgia. Everything was cold and bright. When she blinked, she saw that she was standing on the large driveway of a sprawling white house. The sun had begun to set. All the trees were bare, and right in front of her was a giant turtle? Wait, no, a girl. A girl wearing an extremely unflattering backpack. She stood with her arms crossed and what looked like black war paint smudged under her eyes. She had a thick pen in one hand and a bag of almonds in the other. 
Are there bees in the other world? asked the girl. She didn't seem very surprised to see a roo. In fact, her gaze was a little reproachful, uh, as if a roo had arrived late. I don't know if I'm actually... I don't know if I'm actually allergic, but you never know. You can die within a minute of a bee sting. A minute! And I bet there, there are no emergency rooms. I mean, I know there's magical healing and all, but what if it isn't enough? The girl snapped her eyes towards a roo, her gaze narrowing. I hope you don't have a bee allergy. I only have one EpiPen, but I guess we could share. I'll stab you. You stab me? Aru stared at her. This was the other legendary Pandava sister. Descendant from a god, the girl started digging through her backpack. Boo face-planted onto the grass. Aru could hear his muffled sobs of, why god me, why?